What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about animations and how you can get multiple objects in your model to move by just changing one thing in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is actually an email question I got from one of my subscribers. And basically the question was, when you've got an object like this one, right, that's got a bunch of different geometry in it, how can you animate that object without having to join all of this stuff together? Because the question was, hey, I'm having to join all of this and then I'm losing all of the individual parts and pieces. So there's a much easier way to do this than joining this. So first off, this is the crane model from Theo Richard or Theo Richard from Sketchfab. So you can download this and follow along if you want to. But the first thing that I want is I want a way that I can easily select all of the stuff that needs to rotate, right? Because this is a tower crane model and basically everything above this point right here needs to rotate. And at the moment, what I would have to do is I would have to go in here and I would have to do a shift click and select everything in order to get all of that. But um, in order to be able to get to it quickly, what I wanna do is I just wanna create a new collection. So we're gonna right click and create a new collection. Then we're gonna call this crane top, All right? And what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I'm going to go ahead and click on this drop down right here, but I'm gonna click and select all of these different objects in here that'll go into the top of this crane. And I'm just gonna right click on it and click on move to collection. And I wanna click the option for crane top. And so basically what I've done is I've taken all of that and I've put it in a separate collection right here. Well, what that means is I can right click on this and I can click on the option for select objects right here and I can select them and move them around. And if you forgot anything, you can just take that. You can just select all of that, right click and move that into the crane top collection as well. So now I can select everything that's in here and I can do that over and over and over again. And so what I don't want to have to do though is I don't want to have to select all of these objects every time that um, I want to do a rotation of this object. Plus if I select them all right now, right, if I do a select objects and rotate them, it's not rotating exactly right. I mean, it's close, but notice how the top of my crane is rotating off of the top of this object right here. So what I want to do is I want to take all of those objects and I want to parent them to an empty. And so what that's going to do is that's going to link their movement data to that empty. So to start off, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn off my crane top for a second. And what I wanna do is I wanna come in here and I want to tab into edit mode right here. And I'm just going to select these top vertices at the moment. And then I'm gonna do a mesh snap cursor to selected. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna place my 3D cursor exactly at the center of these top objects that I have selected. So it's putting them right in the middle, which is what I want because um, I wanna tab back into object mode. I wanna do a shift A and I wanna add a plane axis empty. So remember an empty is just kind of a placeholder object inside of uh, your 3D space. Um, there's nothing in it. It's just basically like dictating a location is what it is. So now, what I wanna do is I wanna click on this button right here to unhide everything. And I wanna take all of this stuff, right? I wanna right click in here and I'm gonna click on select objects. And then I wanna go in here and I want to do a control click. And I'm gonna select my empty. So when I select my empty, that's gonna be the last thing that's selected in here. So that means it's the active object in here. Well, now what I can do is I can do a control P and I can do a set parent to object right here. So. When I do that, and one thing that I forgot to do that you wanna do before you do this is I'm gonna tap A and I'm gonna to go to Object, Apply, Rotation and Scale. You wanna make sure that you've applied all of those rotations and scales in here. But now what I can do is I can come in here and I can select that empty and I can rotate it like this. And so if I rotate it on the Z axis like this, what's gonna happen is everything that I just parented to that empty is going to rotate along with the empty. So that transformation data is being applied not only to the empty, but also to the objects that are parented to it. And so now say that you wanted to create an animation in here, you could just turn on auto keying. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to select that empty. I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees over here. That's gonna create a keyframe right here. And then I'm gonna move this up to 60. And then I'm gonna rotate this back to negative 45 degrees here. So that's gonna auto key this. Well now, you've got this animation in here and all you have to do is just adjust this empty to get it to rotate more. 
And so one other trick, just because we're working on a crane and this could be fun, is sometimes you want this piece right here to actually move outward and inward like this. Um, so let's say we were right here, for example, and we wanted this to move inward to start and then move outward as we go. Well, that's a little bit problematic if this isn't aligned along the green axes, right? Because you can take all of these objects, you can select them. And in this case, I'm going to do a control J and just join them into one object. Um, you wouldn't always do that, but for the simplicity, I'm going to do this. But at the moment, right, if I do a G X and try to move this on the green axis, it's not going to work because this has been rotated. Where if we waited until here, it would work like this. And so what we want to do is we want to set the uh, transform orientation of this object to local instead of global. And so if I select this object now and I move this, it's going to transform this along the local axes. So if you go into your view, transform, and you select the option for origins, what that's going to do is that's going to show you the origin of the object and the direction it's facing. Well, notice how this has a local Y value right here. And so if you set your transform to the local instead of the uh, instead of the global, what that's going to do is that's going to move this object along the local. Um, it's going to move it along the local axis right here. So then what I could do is I could just turn on the auto keying again. So I'm going to click on this. Oh, and I need to make sure that I toggle your origins back off. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to move this to right here. Then our 60, we're going to set a keyframe to right here. So now when you click play in your crane, notice how this piece is moving along like this. And maybe you would want that keyframe for this particular object um, to be more like 120. Whoops. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this one keyframe. It's going to drag it. We'll say 110 right here. So that's going to move out more slowly. So notice how now this is moving, even though our crane has stopped moving like this. You can use this parenting function to parent multiple different objects to one object so that you only have to rotate that. That works in a lot of different situations. But leave a comment below. Let me know if this was helpful to you. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.